That's why I messed up on that one commercial. Because I did not think ahead. You don't necessarily need to be way ahead, but you gotta be ahead. Rick, you're probably known for your uh, playing, uh, uh, playing more jingles than anybody else. Uh, why is that, Rick? Well, this I am recreating WABC in the mid-60s, and they were the number one Pam's Jingle customer. And uh, that I'm doing their format, and their format requires playing these, uh, this amount of jingles. If it didn't, I wouldn't. But it does, and I do. And uh, it's just a question of what I'm doing. It happens to be the kind of radio that I most believe in and most comfortable doing, and also it's the kind of radio that makes it easiest for me to do personality. In fact, it's the kind of radio that makes it easy for anybody to do personality because it gives you the most different gaps per hour mm -hmm. to inject what you've got to inject. I'm looking for a record. I got it. There's no records around here. They're all carts. Oh, a la carte. A la carte. It doesn't, doesn't, come, doesn't come with a dinner. A la mode. Oh. Oh, well, let's see here. Uh... Now looking for trivia questions. I do all the trivia research myself, and I know a lot about the history of television and pretty much about the history of sports. And I try to ask a variety of stuff to kind of frustrate everybody. And I'm looking. Uh, let's see. Are you going to be able to take the winners down or everything? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. Little in things. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Ah, <clears throat> uh, that was one of Barbara Walters' favorites. It's White Womb on Coma. Right now, we got 28 minutes after the hour of 9, Coma Chime Time, and Ricky the K Solid Gold Time Machine on a Saturday night. Here's our first trivia question of the evening. 460-1520, the number of the area code 405. Here it is. It's a sports question. Who was the only pitcher this century? That's the uh, 20th century, if you weren't aware of it. Who was the only pitcher this century to win 100 games in both leagues? Who was the only pitcher this century to win 100 games in both leagues? You think about it. Oh, I will, I will, I will. It's just like Froggy. You know, plunk your magic twanger, Froggy? Mm. Von Love and 15 and 20. Let's go back into the annals of disco, 1967, with Victor Lundberg on comma. One of my favorites coming up here. Lovely to You can dance to it with your sweetie or your wife, though. You ask my reaction to long hair or beards on young people. We're not going to tunnel this, are we? We're not going to what? We're not going to tunnel this, are we? No. Don't think they would be good. Well, you have high emotion with the war. And unlike a lot of this job he says today, and Dan Angry told me this, is that if you're going to do, you really you avoid off-color humor. To me, it's not an issue of, uh, of prudishness. To me, it's an issue of creativity. Any idiot can go on the air and can say, can do something uh, that's borderline or way over the line in taste and get people to react to it. But eventually, it does wear out. And I try to do stuff. I have two basic rules. Either keep it very hip or very stupid. Mm -hmm. And what you do by doing that is you appeal to two total different uh, sex of the audience. You got one group of people who are the, the more educated, the more intelligent, the more sophisticated, and they're going to get going to get some of the hip stuff. But even if they don't, even the audience who is less educated, they're going to get the stupid stuff. And what you want to do is, and this I think Dan Ingram was better than anybody at doing this, is that he could appeal to the most educated and the most intelligent person and the most cultured, and he could also appeal to the least educated, the least intelligent, and the youngest 
and be appealing to everybody. And that's what being a communicator is about, is being able to appeal to the, just about every everybody. It's, uh, it's about finding the common denominator in communication that appeals to the widest audience possible. And that's mm -hmm. really where it's at. Yeah. And I try to do it myself. And I don't, I don't know if I'm as good at it as he is, but he was the best. And that's what I target. That's really what I target for. Well, we're going to answer the phone now, which is going to be fun. Call up. Yeah, uh, can I guess about that? Go ahead. Sorry. Call us. Yes. Is it Gaylord Perry? Sorry. Okay. Bye. Bye. For you people who are uh, watching this tape, the right answer is Jim Bunning. What's your address, Augie? Uh, 545 Juniper Street, Green River. Green River? Yeah. Okay. Wyoming. Okay. 82935. And your phone number? Uh, here we go. 307 875 Okay, and your age? Okay. Okay, we'll do it after this next record, right, Rick? Yeah, one more record. Okay, we're going to do a twin spin. We're going to run up your phone bill. Okay. <laughs> About three more minutes. Okay. Okay. First we had the question part of the record, now we're doing the answer part. Okay. Would you rather have the comma seal, frog, or duck of approval? Uh, you want the seal? You do get a choice on this show. That's right. That's right. Sort of like search as a candy mint, search as a breath mint. Okay. Or something. How's the weather like up in Wyoming? Well, it's pretty mild, but it's getting a little snow tonight. Yeah, we're supposed to get some tonight, too. Oh, your name is Vince Augie Demley? Pepley. Pepley. Pepley, Augie. Okay. Is that short for August? Yes, it is. Oh, sort of like August A. Bush. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I don't have the money. Well, he's dead. Don't feel bad. No, no. I'd rather be poor and alive than rich and dead. That's true. There's a lot of dead rich people. Do you listen to the show often? Pardon? Uh, do you listen to the show often? Oh, yeah, quite often. I kind of grew up on it way back in all early 60s. Oh, no, we met, we met the Saturday Night Show in general. Oh, yeah. In specific. Yeah. yeah. Another old radio freak. We love them. Oh, yeah. I enjoy the oldies. Is, is anybody doing this sort of radio format up in that part of the country, or...? Uh, once in a while, the FM station out of Salt Lake. We're about 175 miles from Salt Lake. But uh, fairly isolated southwest Wyoming. Uh-huh. Uh, there's not really a whole lot of local. Yeah. I like the original. Yeah. Well, I'm sort of like canned. I'm canned tankerous. Yeah. Or canned ham. That's right. As Larry Neal said. That's right. Did you get a chance to listen? That's right. Did you, did you get a chance to listen to that air check yet? No, not yet. Oh. But I will. I had a hectic week. I recorded jingles on Saturday, Wednesday night for WNEW and for SMN. 
SMA, the, the uh, Z Rock. Pure gold. Oh, pure gold? Oh, really? Everything they got was a cappella, and everything has the WABC logo. It all goes like Cat Car, Good Time Rock and Roll, or Lou Warren, Good Time Rock and Roll, called 77 WABC, and it's all male. So if anybody who sees this tape is uh, in a city with a pure gold affiliate, you heard it first here. Of course, you'll be watching this five years from now, and the jingles will be off, and I'll be dead. So we don't care. And we were videotaping the show tonight. I'm talking to the camera. Hold on, we're going to go on the air. Hold on. Okay. <coughs> Ah, the question and the answer, Victor Lundberg and every father's teenage son. Got a winner. Hello to Augie Pepley. Yes. How you doing? Pretty good. Where are you calling from? Green River, Wyoming. Green River, Wyoming. That wasn't uh, what the song Creedence Clearwater's Green River was written about, was it? I don't believe so. Okay, we were just checking. Where is Green River, Wyoming in relation to Wyoming? Okay, southwest Wyoming, about 175 miles from Fall Lake City. All right. All right, the trivia question was, we wanted to know who was the uh, only pitcher this century to win 100 games in both the National League and the American League. Who was it? Jim Bunning. Jim Bunning, absolutely correct. How did you know that? Uh, it just happened to come to my mind. Well, you did very, very well, Augie. Congratulations. You won yourself a common diploma for knowing that Jim Bunning won 100 games in both leagues, the only pitcher this century to do it. Congratulations. Well, hang on. Hang on the... Uh oh Oh, no. <laughs> See, I do that when I mess up. Anyway, you want yourself a common diploma. If you'll hang on the phone, we'll tell you how you're going to receive your prize, and thanks for playing. Okay, thank you. All right, that was Augie Demley in Green River, Wyoming. Let's give him the coma seal of approval. Thank you, seal. All right, as our trivia to war continues... Johnny Horton, 1960, on Fun Love and 1520, it's Coma, and Ricky the K's Solid Gold Time Machine. We are doing it on a Saturday night just for you. It'll come to you in the mail. Thanks for playing. All right. Coma. No, we was just answered. It was Jim Bunning. Oh, okay. Sorry. We like it especially when they actually are listening to the station. <laughs> it makes it so much easier. Yes, yes. Rick, got another question for you. Ask him anything you want to know. Okay, this is all, this is all unrehearsed. Obviously. Uh, what would you do about radio today if you had the money, if you had the, if you could change radio, what would you do nowadays? Well, the first thing I would do is I would, I would if, it was, if it was possible in a perfect world, I would make it where everybody who owned a radio station actually had to operate it and be there, where it was like one owner per station and he had to actually be at the station and be an owner operator. Number two, I would make it where the deals cannot be heavily leveraged, where these stations are not so much in debt that they can actually spend money on running the radio station. In many of these situations, they pay so much for the station, they got no money to run it. And that's why you've got some of the real crappy radio around the United States that you have, because a company will buy a station for $15 million and they'll say, well, let's keep it for a year, and we'll find somebody stupider than we are to pay $17 million for it, and we'll try to run it and not spend any money on it. Those, those two things immediately would make radio better. Next thing I would do is I would make radio uh, a little less research uh, and make it a little more uh, creative where people would take a few, a few more chances. The thing that made radio great in the 60s is people took chances and they didn't have anything to go on and they created it as they went. And that's why radio was always fresh and exciting. Today, uh, there is virtually very little original going on. and. This is why I feel so good doing the mid-60s WABC format because it's the one most innovative kind of radio. It gives you the op The biggest thing that a disc jockey needs is he needs the opportunity to be able to do personality. If the opportunity is there and he fails, he has no one but himself to blame. But if in liner card radio today, the opportunity doesn't exist. And that's the problem. 